when a batsman's ability to duck and weave were considered essential skills. From Australia's most recent tour of the West Indies, here's a sample of Bumper Fever. It ain't no place to be for the faint-hearted out there. There's nothing worse than to see a fast bowler standing about this far away from you with the eyes bulging, knowing there's five balls in and over still to come. And they don't mind slipping in the short one either. You've got 0.025 of a second to go forward, back, or just nick off out of the way if you've got any sense. Yeah, well, you don't see so many bounces anymore. Of course, you never bowled too many anyway, did you, man? No, I think what'll happen in the future, though, will be that fast bowlers will become more accurate instead of going for around about up here, they'll probably go from around here to here. And my goodness, five and a half ounces of leather, leather can hurt on one, two, three, or four, or five rib cage. Yeah, he knows how to count too. Later in the show, we'll be talking to two of the biggest crowd pullers in one day international cricket, Alan Border and Simon O'Donnell. You're watching the wide world of sports. More in a moment. Let's do it. Yes, what does it take to escape from Alcatraz? We'll find out shortly when a field of champion triathletes tackle the swim leg across San Francisco Bay. Well, both legs of the Daily Double coming to you live from Canterbury and Sandown. And with the good oil on both meets, here's the Wizard of Odds himself, Kenny Callender. Kenny, you got a winner or two for us out there? I hope so, Maxie Boy. It's only uh, three Saturdays to Christmas. This is the third last Saturday before Christmas. So we've got to start winning now, mate. <laughs> if the fridge is not full at Christmas, we're in trouble. We start off with Sandown. Races five and seven, the Daily Double down there. In the first leg, race five... I'm going for number two, Tropical Nights. Uh, had one run since a spell. Sure to have been improved by that first up fourth. Harry White to ride it. And uh, the one alley will help immensely. Tropical Nights in the first leg of the Daily Double at Sandown. In the second, I'm going for Guns for Hire. A Darren Gauchy mount, TAB number three. Desperately unlucky at its last two starts. Beaten in photos both time. Surely the luck will go her way today. I'm tipping Guns for Hire in the second leg at Sandown. At Canterbury, the two threes. Race six, the first leg, number three, Cabora. Only seven runners. He'll get back a little bit. I think Cabora will steam home over the top of them. Ron Quinton rides Cabora. And in the second leg, good value, number five, Cavalier. Was trapped off the track last start at Hawkesbury against similar opposition. Today, he's got one alley. He'll get a butte run. I think he'll win. I hope he will. Good luck to you, Max. Yeah, let's hope he can too, Ken. There's no doubt about it. He's in the Christmas spirit, isn't he? He certainly is. Well, he'll need to be. He's got to pick up a few winners over the next week or so. <laughs> At Jupiter's Casino on the Gold Coast last Sunday, Stan Longaniti stepped into the ring determined to advance Australia's reputation as a world leader in the non-too-gentle sport of kickboxing. Standing between him and the vacant world junior heavyweight crown was Englishman Lawrence White. Let's go ringside. Well, he's both fighters looking very fit as they come out for round one. 
in this 12 two minute round fight world title it's a vacant title so either man could take it away with him tonight so no champion's going to get the benefit of the doubt so to speak if it comes down to a point decision no. uh, ooh, oh, there's a knockdown is, is that a blatant knockdown it is he's given him a standing eight count Stan, the man, has bitten the canvas well, in the, the first 40 seconds. Combination knockdown slip. Because Lawrence White moving in. Gee, Lawrence White is a big, big man. Look at the definition on this man. He's tall. Uh, he would be coming in on the scales at around 93 kilos, would you say, around about 93 that 93 kilos. Uh, yeah. Stan, the man, uh, thought it was in the ring against Maurice Smith. He, a similar proportions to this guy. Now, Stan took a lot of punishment in that fight. Is that going to tell tonight? No. It, what it did show was that Stan is tough and that he can take punishment. And of course, uh, I, I think that's good. Every, every opponent he's had in the past, which is white. And uh, Maurice Smith brought him back to earth. Stan gets out of the way very well. Stan moves in, throws a bit of uh, glove, foot, and gets out of the way. Lawrence White's looking very impressive at this point in time, and Stan, the man, is going to have his work cut out. He's had a knockdown in the first 40, 40 seconds of round one, and uh, that's not a good way to start your title. Not a good way to start, chance. but it uh, could, could be a blessing in disguise. Well, we're watching him now. The exchanges are starting to pick up. This fight's starting to pick up in momentum. There we I go. Think. You see yep. the flexibility of yep. Stan there. Lifts his leg up beautifully, and uh, of course, he didn't let it go then. I think Lawrence White's confidence has dropped a little bit since that first round. They've sent the taper off a little, and he's now concentrating on just keeping his guard up and keeping Londonides away from him. Lawrence, Lawrence White doing an experienced campaign and knows that uh, Stan would come back from the... Well, he just realised that it was a little bit of... Lack of concentration by Stan. Yeah, because he snuck it in. It just caught me by surprise too. And, uh, well, Stan was tripping, and he snuck that...